My name is Shen Tong, and uh, uh, I should represent a company called uh, uh, V Affinity. Great, thank you, thank you guys. Uh, and um, the uh, uh, I was uh, I first uh, came to this country uh, as uh, exiled uh, uh, students from uh, from China, right after Tiananmen. Uh, great to follow uh, Maurice Act because that's a very good uh, uh, history. Uh, uh, summary that when I first uh, came out of China, carrying on the uh, cause of um, pro democracy and human rights uh, movement uh, after Tiananmen massacre, the first thing we did was the uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, sending fax machine back. I mean, you probably still remember this is uh, Ice Age technology that uh, before and during the Iranian Revolution and certainly for the Central European and Eastern European countries, <coughs> we send fax machines so they didn't communicate. Only a few years later, it was uh, funding from a number of private foundations and uh, National De uh, Endowment for Democracy. My foundation, which I founded after I was exiled, uh, called Democracy China Fund, was sending uh, 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 internet modems back. But uh, 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 the speed of the web and uh, what web enables, especially in the last few years, in terms of uh, uh, the web acting as a social network, social network web, has, uh, uh, has uh, 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 bypassed any of this, uh, what I would call traditional concerted effort that uh, today, even within the uh, firewalls of the great China um, intranet, people get so much free information, much more than we could ever do by sending in uh, modems and, 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 uh, and bring uh, uh, free-minded uh, uh, journalists and intellectuals out of China to get free information and the chances of uh, free uh, exchange of, um, of uh, opinions and, 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 uh, and discussion. <coughs> so uh, that's, that's, that's no news to people in this room. What I want to talk about, uh, get, get to the topic for this uh, session, which is uh, the best practice for uh, cultural educational contents and community as we see it. The, the central uh, point I want to make is that really the, 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 uh, uh, the greatest power now is the web as a, a widespread cultural and social, uh, a cultural phenomenon and social force. Uh, and um, so uh, I'll talk about the web first. I mean, you, you, uh, th this is, uh, again, thanks to uh, uh, Frank's, uh, oh, is the audio on? Wikipedia. Well, we all know that, uh, uh, this is the, the world uh, that's at the center of uh, 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 kids and young adults. Uh, there is a, it's the center of uh, their entertainment, their information, their uh, cultural resources, and uh, their education. So uh, that's just the way it is. And, and Frank, I have, uh, uh, Maurice have pointed out a lot of examples of today's kids being able to use education tools much more than a lot of it, if not most of their professors. In fact, the library archives are competing with Google. I mean, this is common. This is not uh, something unique to uh, educational cultural institutions. I mean, you look at uh, uh, film studios, music labels. They're competing with web offerings. So, so here you, you see some a couple of strange characters. Uh, I know today everybody reads Chinese, but I will still translate. Uh, that's uh, called Weiji, which is a Chinese word of crisis. It's actually made up by two characters. Also, uh, 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 one is uh, danger, the other is opportunity so that the creative uh, uh, translation of the Chinese word goes. But you know, let's stay with a good story. Uh, that, that that's what it meant. Uh, the, the web presented uh, uh, opportunities uh, as well as uh, challenges. Right? So the opportunity here, what I'm going to talk about, is that um, what made Yahoo and Google and Amazon and eBay, those successful web mm -hmm. offerings, and a lot of Wikipedia, those uh, non-commercial efforts, successful, is, is equally available to everyone. That means it's equally available to traditional cultural education institutions. And, um, and uh, being sort of playing the catch-up game, uh, if you look at the, the, uh, the uh, uh, what that would be, left side of the screen, actually there are certain newcomers advantage. So instead of being on the defensive side, everybody uh, can and should harness the power of this web. And when I talk about the web here, it's not so much the, 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 uh, the end use and the web as a cultural phenomenon, 
but it's a, rather the set of technologies, evolving technologies and social forces that enable the web to be the way it is. A couple of point, uh, panelists pointed out it's really uh, 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 hard to, to talk about best practice when we're still trying to understand what the web is and what, what, is it, what it's really doing. But here are some, some initial attempts. I will stick my neck out to, um, to be targeted for criticism and, and, and discussion. And uh, uh, as, as you can see on the screen here, uh, this is a set of things that among VFINIS installs and uh, uh, partnerships uh, uh, with universities here in Asia and other parts of the world and with commercial entities, uh, TV stations, including WNET and, and, and the PBS world, uh, the, the kind of experiences we, we may want to uh, 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 learn a lesson or two uh, from. That uh, some of this are very high bar, but I'll list them very quickly. Intuitive user uh, experience. I'll just cut to a, um, a product demo here uh, as, uh, as a way of introducing uh, this, this concept and uh, about the uh, Vfinity. The, uh, basically, you, you know today if uh, uh, any young kids, in fact anybody, uh, if you give them a bar like this, they know what to do. There's no training. It's intuitive. If it's next to Google and Yahoo, and you say, well, let, let me find uh, anything with Warner, let me find anything with uh, uh, American Archive, well, that may be not in uh, public domain. Let's find American Archive things. We're, we're helping through WNET with the American Archive project. Then you can find uh, all the contents with American Archive. Uh, and uh, if time allows, we'll, we'll show some of that. And, and uh, so intuitive user interface, being able to find video, being able to find all the uh, documents, uh, being able to find all the uh, photos and images, just like that. Being able to have all types of contents uh, universally uh, available and un in managed in a unified way. That may be a good practice to follow. And, um, and uh, there's also uh, the uh, uh, using the web not only as a uh, way to easily and intuitively access information, uh, mm -hmm. such as Google search, which is uh, information in the form of metadata and reference to contents, but also the content itself. But furthermore, it's also the web, uh, this emerging aspect, some call Web 2.0 or even Web 3.0, in terms of web as a way to access tools, content tools, such as online editing, Maurice talked about, uh, uh, and, and semantic linking, so that we, we, we talk to the web not only in terms of keywords, but in, in terms of sentences and, and, and meaning and community and connection between people. So that's the emerging space, is semantic linking. So uh, just uh, some, some quick examples that say, well, you know, in addition to finding all this information of various forms and having the digital masters, different versions, all of that uh, uh, to be accessible, let's find all the project by uh, some popular editing tool, say Photoshop, okay. Why shouldn't that be a asset easily accessible? And then furthermore, easily launched into your local environment so that you have the seamless experience between the web world, the, cl the cloud, and your local environment uh, that you're very familiar with. We may even have a particular attachment to a particular tool, such as Final Cut Pro or uh, Photoshop. Let's say, well, find some Final Cut Pro project for the American Archive, for example. Here we go, this is some Final Cut Pro project and the video that's automatically aligned for those kind of uh, editing project that is compatible. You know, so so the, the idea here is self-service, is that providing a seamless experience that is connected to the intuitive user experience, a seamless experience for, for self-service of a continuum from finding the information, retrieving them, being able to find various versions and taking care of the copyright aspects so that we can know this we can use for a montage, that one we couldn't because of rights issues and then have them seamlessly loaded into your local environment and back. So this is uh, uh, the, the, uh, in, in a computing um, <coughs> science space where it's uh, the, really the browser-driven uh, <coughs> desktop integration. So, so, so that's another aspect. I mean, this is certainly a high bar, but that, that's the, the direction to, to try. I, I just want to show uh, an a example of that, maybe uh, to illustrate the point. I'll show a Final Cut Pro um, example of that. Um, Let's see um, here, we'll take a quick, quick look at uh, how this works. So let's say if you, if you uh, uh, log in and, and search for uh, Final Cut Pro project, this is something uh, we're actually in the process of working with uh, the center and uh, Columbia University to put uh, in the Columbia um, uh, oral archive and other archival environment and media environment, which is that w once you find the, the uh, 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 
you, you do a search, and then you find Final Cut Pro project. The reason that we, we use uh, my own uh, video clips is, uh, in addition to shameless self-promotion, is that uh, I assume I have rights to use uh, the interview I did, at least my portion of it on CNN. So in any case, as you can see, the, uh, there's, a, uh, there's one button. There's no, uh, it's, uh, it's an upward pointing uh, arrow. If you didn't read the manual, most of kids don't like to read manuals anymore, uh, you press that, what happens? If you happen to have a Final Cut Pro in your environment, the production project will walk out of the cloud and into your local environment. That's a seamless self-service experience. So now you can see there's a timeline right here. So, uh, so now you can be in the, the comfort of your local Final Cut Pro editing environment. So what's next? I mean, you, you know anybody who uses Final Cut Pro or Motion or whatever the local creative tools, you know that's, uh, that's something uh, 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 that's a very local experience. But the browser, an intelligent browser, will, will make this at the web scale in terms of shareable collaborative process. So because the search engine is right there, let's say if we want to make that, uh, uh, continue to produce that project, you can find uh, all the photos and images and audios and videos that you may use. For example, this is actually with the Asian University, National Taiwan University. It's a award ceremony uh, for Vfinity in uh, uh, NTU. So let's say we use that for the Vfinity marketing montage. So you see here, you can seamlessly one-click launch, that's the name of this function we call, uh, of that content, again, into your local production environment. So your, 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 your one-click launch, your, your production project, which is shared uh, at the web scale, and your one-click launching your content into that environment. So what happens uh, next? What, what happens uh, with a uh, avid user of this editor? They, they finish editing. They, they do it on timeline. They combine the two videos, as you can see. As soon as they finish, they save and render and produce a new digital master, as they, they call it. Uh, so they don't do anything. <coughs> see, the, the key thing here is they don't, they don't really learn anything new. They're using a tool they're familiar with. They're using Google like search. But the end result is a web scale seamless self-service for a next level of, of the web and social network behavior, which is that you know, now you, you see the project is saved. And if you log in somewhere else, where, where the same place uh, a couple of days later you launch, you know what happens, right? You pick up exactly where the last editor left off. So this is seamless integrated into your desktop environment. And this works with all Microsoft in the Vfinity uh, engine, with all Microsoft Office, with all Adobe Creative Suite, with all Apple tools, and so, most of Sony software tools. So it's just, just, that's just one example of um, this kind of seamless self-service uh, that going beyond the, 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 the web world into the local computing environment. Next, a huge subject about taxonomy versus folksonomy, the ability of having a very flexible uh, system that can easily, say, uh, uh, accommodate any uh, organization or public standard-based uh, metadata standard, as well as Wikipedia or YouTube or My MySpace tagging. The idea also is, of course, self-service intuitive, you know, at, at any, uh, any um, um, metadata field on the fly, being able to take uh, free tagging in as well as uh, universal archive, uh, university archive as well experts tagging in and uh, uh, adding any number of uh, fields and being able to repeat any number of fields. So, so there's, that's a quite an involved discussion, but the idea is this. Being able to have a single unified uh, environment uh, and a metadata schema that accommodate both controlled vocabulary, which certainly has a space, even uh, has a place in our world and in the future emerging convergence world in media. Uh, even though it's uh, been on the defensive side, and certainly accommodate the great power of the free tagging we have seen in Wikipedia, among others. And the uh, uh, next couple of things I'll run through very quickly is that um, you want flexible and open architecture. And that's a very high bar. I already talked about that, but how do you do that? I think I'll stick my neck out to say SOA, service oriented architecture, and uh, web services is probably comes closest in terms of being future proof and proven and scalable today. So we want to try to do that, and wherever possible, open source software uh, as well. And uh, dynamic workflow, we don't have time to cover some, of, some other aspects. So the, the uh, well, that's, uh, that's very involved. I prepared half dozen of use cases, including the American Archive, that we're, we're helping, uh, again, uh, f uh, through WNET to do. And um, that's actually a Ken Devine, a capture Ken Devine, the, the CTO of WNET screen, and uh, just show one instance of uh, how you can uh, have 
for example, PB Core, that's the uh, PBS and the Library of Congress uh, uh, jointly made a standard of uh, um, a method of standard, say enforcing PB Core throughout 374 public stations in this country, as well as uh, uh, their upstream, downstream, their their uh, uh, broadcasters or their production company that are producing a lot of contents for PBS. So, so that's the taxonomy aspects of it, and being able to manage that universally, easily. There are a lot of other aspects. Make it multilingual. I mean, make that also as a, a self-service. So anyone choose a language pre preference, the interface just changes. You want to search in Chinese, or search in Chinese. You want to search, well, yeah, I, I never like hand waving, so I'll, I'll just uh, show you what, what, I was, uh, what I'm referring to. Um, for example, uh, oops, just uh, let's do that. So a, a simple example would be, I change a language uh, uh, preference, say I change to traditional Chinese. So you user interface changes, and you can search, uh, you need to be double byte so you can search in languages. You can actually search in mixed language. So all of the things uh, provide seamless and intuitive user experiences, but have very, very high requirement for the backend. So I think I will stop here instead of going into some use cases and what went wrong, what worked in a variety of industries we have, uh, we have uh, uh, tried um, in the past few years with this generation of web technologies that we built into an engine. They, but instead of uh, putting it as a destination site like a Google or YouTube would do, we license this to our partners and, and, uh, and uh, customers to help them uh, to harness the power of the web from within. So uh, that's my 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs>